Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be talking all about my hair and all about my natural hair journey so far. As many of you guys know already, I've been natural for about 10 years now. I started my natural hair journey in 2010, 2011. So yeah, I'm just gonna be talking about where I was coming from before I started wearing my hair curly and everything in between until now. Right, so let's take it back to the beginning. <laughs> So as a kid, I can only remember wearing my hair in a blow-dried state and then it was either cane road or just put up in like little bubbles and plaits and stuff like that. So I never wore my hair in the curly state at all and yeah, so it's just wash, blow-dry. That's all I ever knew. And my hair wasn't unhealthy, it wasn't damaged or anything like that. My hair was actually thriving with that routine that my mum used to do on my hair. From what I can remember, my mum did use to deep condition my hair. She used to do hot oil treatments. I can't remember ever getting a trim, which explained my trashy ends, as she would say. It's from the pictures that I can remember seeing, my hair was long and it had like a really silky texture to it. I started doing my own hair when I was in year six. Bruh. So I was about what, 12, 11, 12, yeah. So I started doing my own hair at 11. I used to put my hair in a low scrunchie right at the back of my head with one little cane roll going across my head like that. <laughs> and that's because I hated getting my hair done. So I actually learned how to do my own hair and my cousin had taught me how to cane roll from a very young age. So I thought I was well capable to do my own hair. So my mum just used to wash and blow dry my hair for me and I used to style it myself. <laughs> And even in year seven, oh my God, oh, my year seven photo is atrocious. I don't know if I'm gonna show it. <laughs> I've got my hair like in a bun at the back with like my ends out like in a fan in a blow dry state with a cane row going out in front of my face. <laughs> and I had these little geeky circle glasses, right? And there was a screw missing, so it's a bit unhinged and a bit wonky. <laughs> Listen, if there was ever like a true story of the ugly ducking, it was me. <laughs> Not to say that I'm a beautiful swan now, but I really did glow up. It was a big glow up. <laughs> in secondary school, again, all I can remember is wearing my hair in a blow dry state. And I would technically do single plaits in my hair and two French braids, you know, the inverted cane rolls. Apart from that, I think single plaits was my signature hairstyle. It was just something that I could do to just not have to do my hair every day. I didn't get introduced to straightening my hair until I was in year 11. The only time I had like really high heat in my hair was when I was a bridesmaid. I remember getting my hair tonged, curl tonged. But apart from that, I don't really remember my mum straightening my hair at all. I'm actually no, cause my mum used to use a hot comb for my sister's hair. Cause my sister's hair is a bit more coarse than mine. So it's a bit harder for my mum to manage. But yeah, I can't really remember my mum using like high heat in my hair. And I can remember from a young age, I wanted to take care of my hair. Like I do remember like my cousins and stuff, like pulling their hair really tight to where like some of their edges get a little bit pulled out or like pulling their roots so tight where you can see like stretching the scalp and also using like lots of heat to like straighten the fringe or you know, something like that. And I remember my fam some of my family members also having perms, but I can just remember saying to myself that I want to keep my hair in good condition. I want to take care of my hair. And I think that was because, you know, I was in charge of my hair from a very young age. But even saying that, like I never imagined that I could ever wear my hair curly. Like it never, I never really thought about it. Just literally wash and blow dry. That's all I ever knew. So secondary school, single plaits, French braids. Those are my go-to hairstyles. So I might have had my hair straightened a few times before year 11, but the only time that I remember my hair being straight around that time was in my year 11 photo. And so, yeah, I went to the hairdressers and she straightened my hair, gave me a little trim. So my hair was about up here, straight. And I also got my hair straightened again for prom. So after school in college, I was wearing my hair straight a lot. So this is when straightening came in and we, like all of us, used to try and wear our hair straight. We used to straighten our hair dead bone straight, like not even no body or no flow to it, just straight with hella grease. <laughs> so it wasn't like thick grease, it was like 
you know the old ORS hairspray that one so I was wearing my hair straight a lot after school and college during my pregnancy still wearing my hair the same kind of way but I do remember going to the hairdressers for a trim while I was pregnant and that was the last time I ever went to the salon I think I'll look washed straight and then trimmed but as you know for some women who are pregnant their hair grows and grows and grows that's me when I'm pregnant my hair grows I've had two boys and my hair's grown with both of them so my hair was growing it might not have been in the best condition but I didn't ask this hairdresser to cut my hair I asked for a trim this lady chopped my hair right so my hair must have been bra strap length and she cut my hair up to hair I'll try to find a picture on insert it up here but she cut my hair up to hair right my hair was bar strap length so she cut off about that much hair and i don't care if my hair is scraggly or you feel like it needs trimming or blah 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 she didn't discuss anything like that with me to say oh you know it'd be a good idea for you to trim up hair because you got such and such damage and you need to cut it off she didn't say anything like that to me she just cut at that time in my life i was going through so much so much stress and i had like 300 other problems to worry about i was a single mum before i even gave birth so i had that to deal with at 19 years old right so a woman cutting my hair off didn't seem like a big issue <laughs> so i was like peed off for about five minutes and just said to myself i'm never going back there and i never have and i'll say throughout my whole pregnancy i did straighten my hair so it would be like every two to four weeks i would wash and straighten my hair i don't think it was ever two weeks it was between four and six weeks I used to wash and straighten my hair every time without fail. Straightening my hair was my routine. I had it no other way. Unless I got lazy one day and just didn't want to straighten my hair, I would just wash it and pull it in the, the two braids. But for the most part, I did used to straighten my hair every time I washed it. So after birth now is when I realised that my hair was falling out. And it was funny because I didn't know anything about postpartum hair loss or anything like that. And I remember dyeing my hair because i used to dye my hair black because my hair is 1b as you can see it's not jet black so i used to dye my hair jet black and there was one time i saw my cousin or my sister using like a box hair dye it was powder and i remember someone warning me that makes your hair dry you know you're gonna make your hair fall out but i don't know what made me go and try it. i think it was because it was cheap that's why i went for it but um yeah i put it in my hair and I realised soon after that my hair was just falling off in certain places. Like, I remember one specific photo, I don't know if I'm going to be able to find it because it was really, really old. About 2008, 2008 photo. So that would be like on a hard drive somewhere. But I'll try and find it. And I remember my hair being jet black, like bone straight all the way down my back. But it was thin. It was really thin. And I had the sides hair and my hair used to just poke out like that because it's just broken off. Like right here, broken off. And that's when I realised that, okay, maybe I should just start fresh and cut my hair. And that's exactly what I did. I cut my hair all the way up to hair. So my hair was down my back, say about bra strap length again. And I cut my hair up above my shoulders. Fresh cut. I was happy about it and unhappy about it at the same time. <laughs> Because I've never really had short hair in my life. So yeah. I cut my hair and I was still straightening it. But obviously with the short hairstyle I was just trying different different things. So I'm trying out curls now. I'm trying out like sleek styles etc. I didn't wear my hair straight all the time. But in that state in itself it was healthy. And after that I believe I was cutting my hair every 8 weeks. 6 to 8 weeks. Because I wanted my hair to grow out healthy i didn't ever want to get damaged ever again <laughs> so i do remember for a long time i was trimming my hair every six to eight weeks so my hair had really slow growth it was growing out really nicely but it was very very slow so any kind of growth that did happen i'll cut off half of it i think back then i did used to just do like a dead straight cut again i never went being back to the hairdresser so i used to try and do it myself and mess up many many times like mess up the most times 
yeah so all the way up until 2010-2011 is when I was wearing my hair straight religiously and I incorporated trimming my hair every six to eight weeks um so my hair was healthy but I still had no idea that I could get my hair curly yeah so for me the natural hair movement started around that time and there was a lot more people on YouTube sharing their natural hair journey yeah and just sharing what they do with their natural hair on YouTube and it was around this time where I was literally gonna jump on YouTube myself because I was doing exactly the same thing as these people were doing at that time but it just wasn't the right time for me to begin my YouTube journey just because I had so much going on around that time so my very first memory of wanting my hair curly was when I saw someone who had really really nice curly hair and even when she wore it straight she would be able to wear it dead bone straight and it would last and I used to look at this girl and be like wow her hair is so nice so I was envious of her in the beginning because she was able to get her curls like that and it was only until someone told me that that person had a curly perm why she was able to get a curl so nice but that just goes to show that you shouldn't watch other people's hair journey or watch other, what other people have because you know they just might have a curly perm and you're just there looking at your natural state and you're thinking why are my curls not popping these times they've got curly perm so that's one thing i will say though if you are starting out on your journey do not look at anybody else's progress do not look at anybody else's hair and be like oh <laughs> Because you don't know what that person's going through. You don't know what they do with their hair, like, honestly. For me, myself, I've worked really, really hard to get my hair in a healthy state. Then you'll get some people who turn around and be like, it's genetics why her hair's long or why her hair's healthy. Yes, genetics might play a part in it, but in my journey and what I've done and what I know I've done, I've worked hard for it to be able to be this long and healthy. I've taken very good care of my hair. It didn't just come overnight. It took a number of years and it takes hard work and dedication like most things in life and if i was to treat my hair badly it would drop off simple as so yeah don't watch other people's hair journey and what they have yeah so for years and years and years and years and years i didn't wear my hair curly because i didn't think my hair could achieve that like point blank period i didn't think i could get curls in my hair when I used to wash my hair, it just, it just used to be like waves. But it wasn't like defined or anything to say, oh yeah, okay, maybe I should try and, you know, set my hair to be in this way. I will say my hair was heat trained in the beginning. So it didn't have no natural curl pattern or anything like that. And with my wash and goes and I would, you know, have to apply a little bit more gel and I would still have a lot of frizz. So yeah, my curl pattern wasn't too great in the beginning so yeah 2010 2011 is when i started watching youtube tutorials on natural hair care i did used to watch the glam twins and natural nisi those were my two like my two go-to channels and also natural 85 i think there was a few others as well but i still watch those three channels to this very day because even though i am on youtube recording for you guys now i am still a top fan of watching youtube for tutorials and you know, to just learn anything, I'll go to YouTube to learn it. <laughs> Even down to baking, drawing, like, that's the stuff that I do on the outside of YouTube. I watch YouTube to build my skill. Any recipes that I want to try, YouTube, you know? So that's what I was doing back in the day. Just watching anything to do with natural hair because there wasn't a lot of it around. It wasn't as saturated as it is now. So it was those channels, the Glam Twins and Natural Nisi specifically, because I saw their journey coming from having, is it permed hair, I believe, and transitioning. And so for me, my hair was in a transition period because I was growing out that heat trained hair, if you know what I mean. And I did start to realize that the roots or what was growing from the roots was a different texture to what was down here. So when I used to do my wash and goes, I didn't like the way they used to come out because the curl pattern was just too scatty. <laughs> it wasn't uniform. It wasn't, you know, curly, curly. It was just waves, right? And I'll insert a photo to show you guys what it used to look like. In the back, it would be different. In the front, it would be more loose. And my wash and goes just used to hang oddly shaped, like, you know, triangular almost. So for a long time, I didn't wear wash and goes. And I started doing braid outs and twist outs and that was my go-to hairstyle for a very long time and back then it was trying to find out what product works and what product doesn't and you know what i mean like it was difficult because 
there wasn't much information and you just used to have to do trial and error <laughs> so i did like the way my braid outs and my twist outs will come out but even still i was still unhappy with my natural hair so i did use to go back and forth wearing straight hair i wear my hair natural so i did used to prefer my hair being straight but i had this idea in my mind that i wanted to have my naturally curly hair so it's quite difficult for me to actually wear my hair curly because i found it to be quite tedious and time consuming to do my hair in natural styles whereas with the straight hair you just wash it and straighten it and you won't do that again for four to six weeks so i found that i needed extra time to style my hair in the curly styles so what i started to do was to challenge myself to wear my hair curly during the summer just because i know that's the time when my straight hair annoys me most because it sweats out and it doesn't stay straight for very long and the humidity gets to it and it just gets puffy really quick yeah so i used to try out different styles like twist outs braid outs flexi rods you know anything other than a wash and go because i hated my wash and go but a little bit after i started wearing my hair more curly i realized that my curl pattern started to change a little bit it started to get a little bit more coily it started to get back its form a little bit i wouldn't say it got back its form totally i mean i didn't know what i was expecting anyway but um they were just a little bit more bouncier than they were in the beginning so i did try and start to wear my wash and goes a lot more and what i used to do with my wash and goes to make it even out a bit was to just stretch the back and blow dry the roots there that way it doesn't get seen what part is straight and it will match the rest of the hair that's hanging down here because the back of my hair will bunch up like that and then the front of my hair will come down like that <laughs> so yeah i used to blow dry the roots there to make it sit a bit lower and i did that for a long time and also that's when i realized that i had two different textures on my hair so now i would say my hair is in a complete healthy state and still the top part of my hair is in a looser curl pattern than at the back so i have like 3c up here and then 4a at the back it works now because i cut my hair in a certain way the top part is shorter than the back of my hair so it levels out quite nicely when it's curly so i remember in 2012 i went on holiday i went there with my hair straight and then eventually washed my hair and styled it in a curly state at that time i was using the cantu leave-in conditioner and the uh, eco style moroccan oil i think it was so yeah just those two products those are my go-to products i started off using the green top from the very beginning but i changed to the red top and i always used to revert back to the green one the green one is just the best one yes so yeah like whenever i smell that old cantu leave-in conditioner it just reminds me of that holiday that was that 2012 2013 now <laughs> Um, I got a little bit bored with my hair and so I decided to dye the bottom of my hair. I didn't want to do all of it so I just ended up dyeing about that much of my hair. I went at it a good few times with dye. The first two times it didn't take at all. I think I still had some black hair dye in my hair so it didn't take at all and i didn't want to bleach my hair bleaching would have done straight away i didn't want to bleach my hair so i just used box dye and then i used one box dye that resulted in that color that i have here and that was okay for about a month <laughs> i was happy with the color but it did make my ends dry out quite a lot so that's when i realized that you know color is not for me it's not worth damaging my hair for so yeah that's why i use the ors color blast so much because i know i'm never gonna dye my hair again and if i do dye my hair it's gonna be black because i'm getting a hell of a lot of grays these days i might want to cover those up one day so yeah so yeah i dye my ends honey blonde whatever and eventually just started to cut it off so i, I was cutting my hair every i think every six to eight weeks still at that point so the hair dye was gone within a year i'll say i did like the way it came out i did enjoy it but as i said it just damaged my hair too quickly so I had to get rid of it so yeah between all that time i was wearing you know braid outs twist outs wash goals anything that i wanted really but i was still straightening my hair so i go most of the summer without straightening my hair and then in the autumn to winter times i used to alternate two weeks curly two weeks straight two weeks curly two weeks straight and i did that throughout the whole winter and autumn and over the years i just started straightening my hair less and less and less and less and it's only then i realized that the heat 
was doing a lot of my damage or hindering my hair goals. So between 2013 and 2016, I didn't take the best care of my hair. I do remember several times where I would just fling my hair up in a bun and just leave it. I do remember having like the nape of my hair really short. I mean, not just the nape, I mean a full section of my hair being really short. So I had to like trim that part separately for that hair to be able to get trimmed. So yeah, it's all grown out now, as you can see. So that was one problem that I had with my hair was the nape and that was because I was wearing too many high buns, just putting my hair up and flinging it up in a bun and just leaving it. So it was about 2017 when I did another big chop and I cut my hair into like a diva cut. You know, it was popular back then. <laughs> it's a curly cut basically and just cut my hair like that. And I remember doing that and I was like, oh, never, never, never again will I be cutting my hair this short ever again. <laughs> so yeah, from then I've been taking good care of my hair. But the reason why I cut my hair that short was because I got high girl fatigue. 2016 is when I finished uni. Final year of uni was really, really stressful. I had personal life issues as well on top of that. And I came out of uni with no like, no next step. I didn't know what was next. So I had that going on as well. Kind of fell into a little bit of a depression. And so my hair got neglected. My hair got really neglected from that final year in uni anyway. I just used to straighten my hair just to get my hair out of the way. And if it was curly, I'd just fling it up in a bun. But I think what put me over the edge was wetting my hair, putting it up in a bun and leaving it. And then doing the same thing the next day, the next day, the next day. Before you know it, my hair has been in the bun for a whole week. And it's not actually got, had time to fully dry yet. So yeah, I got high girl fatigue just by doing that. And... You know with high growth fatigue, you feel that your hair is really, really, really soft and curly when it's wet. But as soon as it dries, it gets really crispy and really dry. And I literally used to pinch my ends like that and it used to make like a crispy noise. Like when you're pinching maybe your what sits, that's literally how it felt. I would pinch my hair and it used to make it like a crinkly what sits kind of noise. It's disgusting. So I got really fed up at that point and I was like, it's got to go. And I was also curious about getting a curly cut because... I wanted my hair in a better shape. I wasn't supposed to cut it that short, but I got scissor happy and I wasn't liking the way it came out. So I just kept on chopping and chopping and chopping. Oh my God. And I was left with that. But it was nice and I got to wear like really nice cute hairstyles that I wouldn't technically wear when my hair's long. You know, like the curly throw hook. I had a really nice shape to my hair. So that actually made me wear my hair curly a lot more because obviously it was cut in a curly cut. It didn't look good when it was straight. It was just like, you know, raggedy. So I wore my hair curly quite a lot. So yeah, I didn't wear my hair straight much. I didn't cut my hair much. And so it did actually have a period of time where it was just growing and just thriving. The curls were popping. They were popping trust me like so i was very happy with the way my hair looked i just didn't like my hair being short so yeah ever since 2017 really is when i've been taking good care of my hair and just limiting heat to the minimum to the bare minimum so i would only straighten my hair if i really wanted to in the summer completely not and then in the winter i say every month or so i was doing it instead of every two weeks or maybe every two months. So I was straightening my hair about six to eight times a year. And then now I only straighten my hair if I want to cut my hair. And I cut my hair three times a year. If that even. Sometimes it's only twice a year. So, but you know, sometimes I might want to wear my hair straight and I will straighten my hair. I'm not too strict to myself about straightening my hair. But I know that if I don't straighten my hair, there's less chance of it getting damaged less damage done to your hair because when you do straighten your hair you do actually break down the bonds in your hair so yeah less damage less dryness and it's just been thriving ever since especially during the quarantine period because i wore my hair in juicy twist quite a lot so i didn't need to actually trim my hair at all so i didn't straighten it and it was just in protective style most of the time so my hair really got a good bout of growth over that time but yeah so from 2017 my hair regime and routine has been the same and that's where i've seen my my curls flourish the most and it's continuing to flourish it's at a very decent length i achieve waist length as well so it's not really one of my goals anymore my goal is to have healthy hair 
that's all I want healthy hair because I know that healthy hair grows and if your hair is going to grow and it's healthy it's going to grow along so everybody's goal in a natural hair journey should be healthy hair first because healthy hair will grow my hair is quite long right now but I did cut three inches off the last time I cut it so I'm not expecting my hair to be waist length anymore but I wouldn't be surprised when I cut it in September that my hair is back to waist length because I've been taking very very good care of it as you've seen on my channel i haven't straightened it once i haven't done any sort of damaging hairstyles or anything like that but i do think my hair is thinning only because the twists that i did with this twist out were a little bit on the thinner side they wasn't as dense as they usually are but in saying that the volume is hair so i don't know whether the product was like so thick that it kind of tamed my hair I don't know but yeah also when i was pregnant in 2019 my hair had mad growth spurt i was taking pregnant care so it's basically vitamins <laughs> and obviously with the hormones as well your hair does grow and after i had him my hair was still long still thick still healthy but then about six to nine months later I started experiencing postpartum hair fall and I only realized that it was postpartum hair fall because my cousin who had the baby around the same time as me was also experiencing that and she was saying she made a comment about mad baby hairs or something like that and I realized that my baby hairs were quite thick and basically what that was was new growth so all the new hairs were just laying flat and short at the front so I had most of my hair loss at the front of my hair here i could see it the most there even now when i pull my hair out like that you'll see that all around hair is quite short and even like in the, the middle of my hair here you'll see parts where it's where there's like new growth i can't even show you guys i don't know where it is but i do feel like i had quite a lot of fallout only because my hair used to be quite difficult to do and now it just feels much easier to handle not as thick but it still has a lot of body so it's nothing to complain about but i know my hair and i know that it was quite <laughs> a struggle to do my hair so over the years i will expect some density to come back because all that new growth is going to reach down here one day so i'm hoping that i don't have to do a big chop eventually but my ends are still nice and full and thick so it's not even a consideration right now so yeah postpartum hair fall didn't affect me too much but i did also notice like big clumps of hair coming out in the shower when i'm brushing it out and so for me i decided that i'm not going to let my hair get too matted because maybe that's why it's falling out but even after that i still kept on seeing it coming out coming out and nowadays i'll get like say that much hair fall back then i was getting about that much every time i wash my hair but i was quite lucky because my hair is very thick so i'm left with <laughs> quite a lot of hair still but yeah after pregnancy during coronavirus just been taking care of my hair and now i jumped on youtube and i'm having to do my hair every week now so you guys actually help me out because if i don't do my hair i don't have no content so <laughs> but yeah i stuck with my regime i'll have another video more about Tamagotchi. <laughs> I will have another video about my hair regime and a week in my hair video as well just to show you guys what I do day to day with my hair not just week for week day to day matters so yeah now my hair is waist length my hair is healthy my hair is thriving so I've come a very very long way to get here and I've dedicated myself to my natural hair to get it to this state. So yes, it's not been an overnight journey. It has been hard work and dedication. And just like with anything else, when you apply those two, you will reap the benefits. So my hair goals now is to just keep my hair healthy and possibly make it healthier. To try and increase the hydration levels of my hair. I'm still trying to figure out that without doing too much because I don't want to try this method and that method and this method and that method to get what I want. I don't want to play with my hair too much and then resultantly damaging my hair. So yeah, hydration levels and health. As I said, length is not really a goal for me anymore. I think once you get to waist length hair, it just kind of just goes out the window. Like, do I really want tailbone length hair? I, I don't know. Okay, so with my curly hair, I've realized that my hair yes it gets a little bit of length that way but it does grow this way 
even more so and i don't mind big hair really don't mind it but i just imagined myself that i was gonna have this long curly hair way back down in my back and that's just not the case it's, it's not gonna be the case my hair would have to be knee bone length <laughs> my hair would have to be knee length for it to reach that state so yeah but yeah i'm gonna continue this youtube journey now to share it with you guys everything that i've learned over the past 10 to 11 years and show you guys what i do with my hair day to day month to month week to week year to year so stay tuned for more hair care videos more natural hair tips more diy videos and everything else in between <laughs> but yeah that's the end of the video guys thank you for listening and thank you for watching don't forget to leave this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you want to see more content from me thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one Thank <music> you.